Are you tired of being dirty? Tired of feeling dirty? Tired of having dirty thoughts? Tired of the dirty world out there? You can take a shower, but it just doesn't quite do it. You want to go places and do things and whatever, and there's so much that you see, and as the Bible says, it, it vexes you. Are you tired of being dirty? Um, I was raised in organized religion, and um, I thought this was a really clean place. And as I got older, I started to realize, uh, no, actually, it's pretty dirty. <laughs> um, there's controversies that are covered up. There are certain people within the church that I was raised in they get preferential treatment because they tithe more. Um, just be honest about it. Um, it's not really that clean of a place. I'm hearing the same kind of foul language and joking and whatever else in among my uh, Sunday school group that I hear when I go to public school. Huh. And I go to public school and I hang out with friends there. I go back to their house and they go to church as well. And yet the father's got pornography magazines and they watch dirty movies and things and you know and you experience that stuff and you're out there in the world and you eventually just get to the point where you say I just want to be clean I'm so tired of this dirty stuff isn't there something holy isn't there something righteous out there you see I was raised in organized religion not in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and you have to come to Jesus Christ to truly get clean Nobody else can offer you the cleanliness that He offers. I'm going to go to the Scriptures now. I'm going to show you how to get clean. Matthew chapter 8. We'll start out there. This world is a very filthy, horrible place. And this is the only solution that there is. I can promise you that. Because I've been out there. I haven't experienced all the wickedness and all the sin in every evil place and whatever else. But I've experienced enough to know that it makes you feel very dirty and very defiled. <clears throat> Some people like to live in the sewer, but uh, there are those of us that don't want that. Matthew chapter 8 verse 1. When he was gone or when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold there came a leper and worshiped him saying, "Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean." He wanted to be purified his flesh. He's got these Leprous sores all over him. I want to be clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Huh. You say, what's that? Clean from disease. There are a lot of diseases out there that the Lord can heal you from. I do believe in the healing power of Jesus Christ. I don't believe in the uh, make money kind of healing that's done among the charismatics where they come they they put on a little show and they pretend that people are getting healed and whatever else and if we would just give you know love god with all of our hearts and with all of our wallets as well and and just you know uh plant a seed you know if you plant the seed the your financial seed today will provide the manure you know to fertilize the seed uh no no i believe in true healing why because i have experienced true healing from the lord there have been times I was extremely sick and I had people pray for me and my sickness went away. And there were times back when I was lost and a simple churchgoer when prayers didn't do a thing. And I went through some really horrible times, very painful things and had a heart condition most of my life, just didn't even understand it was a nutritional deficiency. Um, and now I'm healed from it. The Lord gives wisdom. It isn't just some kind of a thing of what we have here where the Lord heals them instantly. I've experienced that, but I've also experienced the Lord giving healing through wisdom that the Holy Spirit gives. The Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14, there are gifts that are given to the body of Christ when you are genuinely saved. And one of those is the gifts, plural, of healing. You don't need gifts, plural, of healing if you have divine miraculous healing power you just go and you oh you have a nutritional deficiency be healed yeah legs missing be healed um they, they're blind be healed they're, you know and you just boom 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 boom. but in the new testament that was those sign gifts were there early on to confirm the word of the jews that's what jesus christ was doing with his healing part of his ministry when he was here it was divine miraculous healing like we see see right there 
which I believe can happen. Uh, the Lord can heal you through prayer. I believe in that. I don't believe in the this thing of these uh, healer people or whatever else that they can lay their hands and, and whatever and, and the person's healed because of the power of the Holy Spirit coming through the healer. No, no, I don't believe in that. I believe in the power of prayer. God can heal you. And you can have people pray for you, certainly. But the apostolic sign thing of laying the hands on, on the sick and they recover instantly is a miraculous thing. I don't believe that that's here for today. Outside of God healing through prayer. All right, just to get that clear. But gifts of healing, where the Lord can say, okay, somebody has a really good prayer ministry, they can go pray for people, the sick can recover that way, great. Nutritional health, um, God, the Holy, through the Holy Spirit, He gives you wisdom that you can understand different ways to heal people, herbal healing, uh, lots of stuff like that. You say, what about the medical establishment? The medical establishment uses pharmacia, they use witchcraft. Uh, chemicals, toxic chemicals to give you good health. Um, it causes reactions within the body that seem to cause, you know, your blood pressure to go down or something like that because you take a drug, a pharmaceutical drug, a witchcraft drug to lower your blood pressure. But what it does is it might lower the blood pressure, but then it gives you a bunch of other problems. It starts to wreck your liver or your kidneys or things like that. And so that's why you have polypharmacy, meaning people that get onto multiple types of witchcraft. <laughs> um, they're, they are, they're under multiple spells, known as pills. All right. Um, this is the way that that is. But um, so we have there, you know, that you can be clean from disease. Make me clean, Lord. And the Lord says, okay, I will be, you know, be clean. Let's look at the next one. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, uh, verse 25. We'll start there. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Um <clears throat> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear outward beautiful, uh, which, excuse me, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Because ye build the tombs of the prophets, and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them that which killed the prophets. Fill ye, then, fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? One of my favorite portions of scripture is Matthew chapter 23 because it completely destroys this myth that Jesus was this soft-spoken kind of a nice guy that never judged anybody. Uh, that's not true. What is Jesus Christ saying here? You look at the first part of this and he's saying you're to cleanse first the inside, but they make the outside look clean. Religious hypocrisy is what it's talking about. Jesus Christ can clean you up from religious hypocrisy. And again, you know how I know that? Because that's what he did to me. I was a very clean youth, a young man. I didn't smoke. I didn't chew. I didn't go with those that do. I was a, I abstained from alcohol. I didn't go get drunk with my friends when we'd go out hanging out and things. We'd go stop at a party and they'd want to go drink. And I'd say, I'm leaving. Goodbye. I'm not, I don't want anything to do with that. Oh boy, he's a really you know, righteous Joe. He's a real good guy there, that Denlinger. Um, yeah, but I had a whole bunch of wicked sin inside of me. And I could go to church and I could, you know, stand up and sing the hymns and, oh, you know, hello, uh, hello, and everything. I was a wicked sinner. I wasn't saved. I wasn't born again. Just like most church people. You can go into a church building. I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer used to go to church. He used to take his victims to church before he would kill them. If you don't know who Jeffrey Dahmer was, by the way, he was one of the most infamous serial killers out there. And he would kill male victims. And then he would cut them up into pieces and he would eat parts of them and everything else. Real sick ticket. He went to prison and I do believe the guy actually got saved 
in prison. And you can watch my videos on that whole subject. Going over his testimony, not just video, but also the book that was written about the chaplain guy that would go and see Jeffrey Dahmer. Another big story. But the whole point is, while he was a cannibal and a sodomite and doing all this other horrible nightmare stuff, he was going to church. Uh, there was a guy in Lancaster County, Charlie Roberts, I think the guy's name was. He tried to rape a whole school of Amish schoolgirls and then ended up killing them all and killed himself. Terrible, horrible massacre. Went to church. You go into the church and you sit down in the pew and there and you get these people sitting next to you. You don't know what you're sitting next to other than the fact that they're whited sepulchers. You wouldn't believe the kind of people that go to church. God can clean you up from religious hypocrisy. And it's a good thing to be clean from. Let's go to John chapter 15 next. One of the most dangerous places out there is uh, church buildings. I remember talking to a guy from uh, Bible Baptist Church in Pensacola, Florida, back when Peter Ruckman was still alive. One of his church members called me and they wanted to publish a letter that I had written to Dr. Ruckman. And um, in their Bible Baptist bulletin, I forget the year and the whole thing, but you know, he said about they disagreed with me on a point, and that was I said churches should never have uh, background checks, police background checks for people that want to teach Sunday school or whatever else. And he said we disagree because he said we've had to do that down here to you know check out certain students and other things because we've had pedophiles coming here, coming to church. Yeah, sure, you have access to the people's children bunch of whited sepulchers. It's terrible. John chapter 15 verses 1 through 8. Look at the next type of being clean here. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that it, he, that it may bring forth more fruit. And now are ye clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself Except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Uh, what's this one? Clean from worldly thinking. Verse 3, Now are ye clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You know, I can tell if I'm in the home of a Christian or not. Because I'll go into the home and I'll see scriptures posted around or I'll see Bibles laying around that are open and they're reading the Bibles. I'm not going to look around and see a bunch of worldly movies or whatever else. Um, I like to see fanatical Christians. <laughs> Okay, they just the word of God just plastered all over their vehicles and all over their houses and everything else because it makes you feel clean. You go around, and you you look and you see a scripture and you over there is a scripture. There's a scripture that was sent to me. People made these scriptures for me. There's another one over there that I have posted. I'm not going to turn the camera around and show all this stuff here, but I have a, a banner. Uh, Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Right there. Uh, hanging, you know, King James Radio Ministries. It's a banner that hangs out in the big window right here, looking out towards the street. People walking by, they see the scriptures. Why? I want to feel clean. And I like to tell people how to become clean, too. I'm not interested in uh, all the movies and things of Hollywood. I used to have that stuff, and I burned it. Got rid of it. Why? Because I want to feel clean. You know, I can sing hymns, have my wonderful hymn book here. You can sing hymns, and I feel clean. Hear vile, filthy, horrible music talking about fornication and whatever else. I go to the store and, and walking through the store, and I hear this stuff. And I, oh man, all that song's just going through my head. And go out to the vehicle, and I think, okay, uh, I have to start singing a hymn. I want to feel clean. I want to clean up my mind. Start quoting scripture. Start talking about the things of the Lord. But I go into these homes and, oh, I'm a Christian and whatever else. And I walk in, I smell something a little bit smoky in here. That's kind of an issue. Uh, 
Looks like there's some beer over there. Okay, well, you know, how long have you been saved? Oh, I've been saved for 30 years, brother. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I don't like to smell stinky things like that. Uh, I can smell the smell of cigarettes now. And I've worked around, you know, smoking people and uh, had a relative that was a smoker and we'd go fishing together and you know, he'd be smoking. I just, I hate the smell of cigarettes. And now it's, I'm so sensitive to it, I can just smell somebody's over in the parking lot, you know, 30 feet away and I can smell their cigarette. And it's like, oh, ugh, you know, makes me feel dirty. Oh, you're self-righteous and whatever. Can't help you. First John chapter 1. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I understand what it's like to struggle with sin. I get it. I get Christians and you know, and I, Brother Brian, please pray for me. I'm struggling with the thing of cigarettes and I'm just trying to get rid of it. And Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad that you're struggling with it. I'm glad that you're trying to get rid of it. Get it out of your life because it makes you feel dirty taking a cigarette, putting it in the ashtray there, and there's this little tray, and it's, you know, stinky and a little, you know, ash in there and everything else. I remember being a boy, and the one time my father got these tickets to some baseball game someplace um, down in Philadelphia. Was it Vet Stadium or something? I don't remember. I was just a little boy, but he took us along, and, and it was this box seat. You know, you go up in there, and uh, we were up in there, and I remember looking at this ashtray. I don't know what the thing was, and I'm looking at it, and I'm, you know, poking around it. My, my father said, don't touch that. That's an ashtray. What's an ashtray? That's <laughs> people smoke, and they put the thing in, you know. Oh, 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 okay. That's, you know, and there's some people over there, they were smoking, and it, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> But getting back to it here, First John chapter 1, let's look at the next type of way to be clean. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Reference to Jesus Christ there, capital W. Seven references in your King James Bible. The NIV I did a video on this years ago. They took out one of the references to capital W, word of God. Hmm. Reducing the number from seven down to six. Interesting. Seven is God's number. Six is the number of man. <clears throat> Verse 2. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. That's a pretty good thing. So then we're sinlessly perfect, right? Keep reading. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Every day you will be defiled by sin. And a lot of times it's not your fault. Like I said, you go to the store, you go to the grocery store, you walk in, I'm here for tomatoes, onions, some kombucha maybe or something and some cheese and some milk, some eggs and whatever else. And you walk in there and there comes some music on and you, oh, uh, you know, and it starts to make you get fleshly and you start to think, oh, why you to listen to that and stop and you, and you get out of that and you walk out and some of you that have had a problem with cigarettes and somebody's outside and they're smoking and you walk past and you think, oh, oh, the smell of that. Oh, it makes me crave cigarettes again because of the sugar that's in them. That's why you crave it. It's not just nicotine, it's sugar. That's a whole other issue. Walking around, you see the junk food. I see the junk food, the candy, and it, oh boy, I used to like those things. And, you know, I'm kind of hungry right now. And no, no, it'll make me, you know, sick. <laughs> what do you do? You come out of the world, you come back into your safe haven, your home, and you say, oh, I have to get cleaned up. Okay. Let's uh, read the Word of God. 
Oh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm Lord, I'm so sorry. I had to I looked at that thing and I was lusting after that. And that one woman walked by and I looked at her and I should have looked twice. I should have. I'm sorry, Lord. Sanctification, cleaning yourself up. That's what you have to do as a Christian. And I see these people and they say, I don't even worry about it, man. I just I go out there in a life. I enjoy life. You know what I mean? I enjoy salvation. I, I don't even think about this. That doesn't bother me. I just, you know, it, uh, I think we're dealing with somebody that has it up here, but not down here. If you're genuinely saved, you're going, you're going to want to be cleaned up. You're going to want to get that wicked music out of your mind. You're going to want to get the filthy things away from you. You don't want to get up in the morning and, oh, I have a headache. Oh, what happened? I just had a little bit too much to drink last night. Hold on, I have to get into the bathroom. Saint of God on their knees, puking out the, the, the alcohol, the remnants of the alcohol, into the toilet? <laughs> Is that the image of a Christian? Well, maybe early on you're struggling with it. I get it. I understand. I understand the struggles. Okay, I understand that. But as a lifelong thing? Really? Second Corinthians chapter 11. Let's go on and see what else we can read about in terms of getting cleaned up. How to get clean. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Beginning in verse 1. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that, that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Um, I have tried to warn people about some of the false prophets out there and some of the false teachings and everything else. Why? Because I'm, God, I'm, I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy. I don't like to see my viewers showing up on other channels where I know that they're going to get messed up. I don't like to see that. I try to warn you. And I've tried to put out plenty of videos explaining why you should stay away from hyper-dispensationalists or Calvinism or you know new version people or you, know, you get down through the list. Post-tribbers, mid trib, pre-wrath, all that stuff. Stay away from that stuff. Um, I've tried to warn people, tried to explain from the scriptures, and yet I still see people and they get messed up. I want to present you as a chaste virgin to Jesus Christ. And if you follow what this ministry teaches, and when it lines up with the book, it will make you a clean Christian. You won't get messed up with this stuff. But a lot of these other teachings, a lot of the false teachings, it will mess you up. I've seen it. I try to warn people, try to keep you on the straight path, the narrow path. Hey, you know what? You should only have one Bible. Why? Because it will help you to be sanctified. But you see, when you go with all these new versions, you go with this one and over here and that one. I like the style of this one better and this one looks a lot nicer. It starts to mess you up. Well, I don't, I don't uh, go with the new versions, but I'll go with the Geneva Bible and I'll go back to the, this and that. It messes you up. It always does. I've seen it for many years. Trust somebody that's been there and done that and has the experience to warn you. Let's go next to Ephesians chapter 5. You know, and I'll say this too. Another way that you can look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 4 there, about another Jesus and whatever else. Um, you don't have to have other gods or other books. This is the Word of God. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I don't need to get into trying to rename him a Hebrew word and, and that actually just means Joshua. And I don't need to do this and do that and all this other stuff. I just Jesus is fine by me. He died to pay for my sins. I'm a sinner. He died on the cross, paid for my sins. I ask God to save me because I believe in the Word of God. It's very simple. Well, but, you know, this, what about this? What about that? No, thank you. Again, remember, um, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. 
you know, you're to stay away from those people. You, you reject them. You don't just hang out and just dialogue with these people. No, it doesn't work that way. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Another way to get clean. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. You get clean through washing yourself by the word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It's so important. Uh, you want to feel clean? You want to get your mind cleaned up? Cleaned from the filth of the world out there? Abstain from that stuff. Get away from it. Abstain from all appearance of evil. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Wherewithal shall the young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You just Scripture, scripture, scripture. This book, you don't put this book down and say, well, I'll get back to it next week. You know, I, I read this book here. You know, recently I went through this book. I'll be doing a video about this here before long. I'm going through the second one. But this book here, very good book. More to say it on, on it in the future. But I don't need to read this book every day. This book is not going to make me sanctified and whatever on the level of Scripture. It's a good book. But, you know, I don't need to read it all the time. But this book here, this one I need in my life every day. Let's go next to uh, Acts chapter 18. Here's a good one. This is one of the ones I know a lot of the brethren in the Bible-believing world and the Baptist churches in particular. They beat themselves up over this one, but here's a good one. Acts chapter 18, verse 5 and 6. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, and he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. You know something? You can be clean from guilt. What are you talking about? You have co-workers, you have family members, and they oppose themselves and they blaspheme. I don't want to hear about your Jesus. Don't preach to me. Don't try to control my life. Get that Bible away from me, you hypocrite. You religious bigot, you. Who are you to judge me? They're opposing themselves. They're blaspheming. And you know what you do? I'm clean. I warned you. I'm no longer at fault. I don't. I, there's no fault coming upon me from God. Or you should have talked to them or whatever. I was pressed in the Spirit to tell you about Jesus Christ, to try to show you from the Word of God how to be saved, to try to talk to you about the Scriptures, and you opposed yourself and you blasphemed, I am clean. And you wash your hands of them, and you move on. Oh, uh, is your mother going to hell? Your father going to hell? Yeah, they are. All right, back to where don't it doesn't bother you? Well, it used to, but you know what? I was pressed in the spirit, and I witnessed to that person. They opposed themselves and blasphemed the Lord Jesus Christ, and I said, "I'm clean of you." Wash my hands, in other words. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing some special hand signals or something like that. <laughs> uh, I have to say that. I'm just trying to symbolically show washing your hands of them and you're clean. Okay, I remember I actually did that and I had my neighbor, and I've told this story many times, a Roman Catholic. I finally got a chance to witness to him when he was actually sober, which was very rare. And, uh, <clears throat> and he said, I will never believe what you believe. Ever. And I said, okay. And I walked away. 
I didn't say, well, let me just come at it a different way. And I'm going to get you and I'm going to get you with the words and special things. I'm going to get you. I'm not leaving here till you pray the prayer. I'm clean from you. You opposed yourself. You blasphemed Jesus Christ. You clearly heard the gospel. You rejected the gospel. I am clean from you. And you know what? No guilt. There were times I tried to witness to the guy and it didn't come out and whatever else and I'd have to leave and go. And I'd think, oh, I got close that time. Oh, Lord, I, I, just, I didn't say something right or whatever else. And you feel guilty. But when there are times when you get a clear time, when the Lord, the, you're pressed in the Spirit, the Lord says, okay, witness to this person, and you do, and they oppose themselves, you're clean. Walk away. Don't let it bother you. And you know what else? Don't let it bother you if you're not pressed in the Spirit. You don't, don't feel like you're just, if you don't witness to people all the time and whatever else, the Lord doesn't open up uh, doors of opportunity sometimes. And there's times it just doesn't come up. You go in there and the guy just won't let you get a word in ed edgewise and whatever. And you're, I'd really like to witness to this guy, but I can't and, and things. There are those times too. Don't beat yourself up about it. All right? Be there for the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will open up that door and they'll say something and they'll be receptive. They'll listen to it. And then they, ah, you know, I don't know. Okay, don't, you know, they'll get mad at you. I'm clean. Clean from guilt. Revelation 19. Revelation chapter 19, beginning in verse 5. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Where did our righteousness come from? It's imputed to us by Jesus Christ. Hmm. That's a good thing to be clean there and have his righteousness imputed. Verse 9. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Hmm. Um, you know, if you go out to my property, or even here at my office, you're not going to see me wearing a white robe very often. Why? Because I live in a very filthy world. I don't wear all white. And here's a shirt that I have on and uh, kind of a traditional Bavarian shirt here and it's got white with red you know checkers or whatever um, but uh, all white I don't usually wear all white it would get dirty pretty quickly but I will be in heaven and it's going to be a different type of white it's going to be the white and clean righteousness of Jesus Christ that comes upon me when I finally have a new body of flesh not this old corruptible body of sin. I'm going to be going and I'll be like him. I'll see him as he is. Look forward to that. Finally, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And here's the final cleaning. 
And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I'm looking forward to that cleansing most of all. The time when there's no more crying, when God looks down and he wipes away our tears. And that uh, wiping away the tears, by the way, there, comes after Revelation chapter 20, the great white throne judgment, when we see all of the lost judged, standing before God, and they're cast into the lake of fire. There's going to be some crying in heaven among the saints, and God wipes it all away. You're clean. I've cleaned you. I've cleansed you. And I'm going to be walking around someday with a robe of white on, the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to me, walking around on the streets of gold. Clean. No smell of smoke up there coming from people walking by. Hey, hey, Brother Brian, you know, how you doing today? You know. No. Here's a saint over here, had a little bit too much to drink. He's puking in, you know, in the, no, into the into the river of life. I don't think so. Um, <clears throat> what's that sound? Uh, you know, here comes a chariot by or something with loud music of boom, 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 boom. <laughs> No. No. You know, I go into this saint's house and he's in there watching some movie or whatever, Hollywood movie. No. Can't wait. But a lot of people, quite frankly, that would be a very uh, horrible place for them because they don't want to be clean. They want to be in a place where they hear people using profanity. They want to be in the nightclub and the, seeing all the dirty and filthy and everything else. You know, if you go into the average nightclub... Um, turn bright lights on, you'd be shocked at how dirty it is in there. Physically dirty. I'm not just talking spiritual, but, you know, physically dirty. Yeah. There was actually a um, old uh, bar, pub, or whatever else down in um, the town of Newmanstown, Newmanstown, PA. New man's town now, I don't think so. <laughs> old man's town. And um, my father, back when he was still alive, he had a friend that he... Um, had known for many years. The guy's name was Bob Fry. I don't know if he's still alive or, or whatever. I think it was him. But he was talking about that he went to this bar the one time. And um, I forget what the name of the thing was, but it was an old one. It, it wasn't in operation anymore. But he said, literally, he said, there at the bar, he said, there was a, a brass trough going down over to a, you know, a pipe that went down in there. And he thought, what's that all about? Look down on the floor, there's a spittoons, you know, and guys are in there talking about, you know, things, whatever, and, you know, spitting down into the spittoon, spitting like that, not always hitting it correctly. There's some on the floor and whatever else, and some splash on the guy's leg. And about that time, he hears some guy over there, zip, and he zips down, and he's, and he said, the guy's standing there at the bar, and he's peeing into this brass gutter going down in. Oh, that's, you, you don't have to leave the bar. You can just stand there and, take a leak if you want to and whatever else and smoke is so thick you can barely see people and it's in there and just profanity and whatever else and that guy was raised Mennonite he knew better he shouldn't have been in there you know Mennonite the whole thing false cult there I realize but you see what I'm saying it, you should want to be clean talk about a filthy place I go into a place like that or I get anywhere near stuff like that now and I just oh man I don't need to hear the music. I don't want to smell the smells. I don't want to see the th stuff and hear the, the vile, filthy language. Ah, I want to get clean. And maybe you're out there and you're a young person and you have a rather foul life right now. You have a family that's, uh, that likes the dirtiness and it vexes you because you want to you made the decision to be saved and you want to follow Jesus Christ and you want to read his word. Um, the Lord will lead you out of that situation. He will make miraculous things happen to get you to a place where you can be clean. And um, that's why I live where I do. I'm thankful that I live in northern Maine where there's not very many people. Um, I get into areas where there's a lot of people and it, it just... Ugh, you know, <laughs> I mean, Lord, if you want me to witness to somebody and I've had the chance, you know, he'll set up divine appointments. I've had that happen many times at busy places where there's lots of people. 
but okay, Lord, I've done with that now. Okay, <laughs> time to go. Um, <clears throat> I want to be out in the woods, out in the forest, out there by the crystal clear streams. And, and I'm very happy with where I live. And uh, moving to the city and whatever, no, no. Um, I'm too weak to do that. See, it's not a matter of I'm so self-righteous and I'm so wonderful and everything else that I'm just, I just float above the evil of the world. That's not the case. I realize how weak my flesh is. And if I was around evil places all the time, I'd fall for it. I'd start getting messed up in sin. So I moved as far away from that stuff as I could. And I know some of you out there, you'd like to as well. Pray about it. And uh, be willing to suffer a little bit. Okay, that's another thing. Uh, well, I just I have to wait till I can save up and get the perfect situation, some beautiful home with 500 acres of land or something. No. Be willing to go and suffer a little bit. You might have to live in a trailer, live in a camper, live in your vehicle or something for a little while. Buy a piece of land and go out there and live on the land or something without electricity and you have to go to the library to use the internet or something. I know, I've known plenty of people that have told me that, that that's exactly what they do. Had a guy, you know, living in a tent, you know, and he'd go into the library and things, and I've had homeless people watching me and things. Um, can you get clean? Is your little tent there that you have out on your acre of land, or I can stay in some place or whatever? Um, okay. Try to get clean. Try to make a place that's clean. And um, you're a young person, still at home, and your family's very vile and filthy and whatever else, pray about that. Pray about, how can I get out of this situation? Um, are there other young people, other Christians we could move in and have an apartment on our own and have jobs at some place and whatever else? And you know, I mean, I spent years out there in the lost world working at a secular job. So don't tell me, well, brother, you don't know what it's like. Yes, I do know what it's like. Yes, I do understand. I mean, there was literally the one place I used to work, a factory, and the one guy came in and was bragging that the boat that we were building, that he had brought his girlfriend that night before, and that they were fornicating on the, the deck of the boat where I was, where we were building things. And he was laughing about it. That's kind of, oh, that's nice to know. You know, I'm up there with on, on my knees, you know, hooking up uh, wiring and lights and things like this. And some pervert was in there, you know, and hearing that and hearing this guy's cheating on his wife. And this guy here went out drinking and whatever else and bleep, 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 bleep. And they're playing classic rock and things on the, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was lost, but, you know, even then it still vexed me. It still made me feel dirty. So don't tell me I don't know about it. Yes, I do. I understand it very well. And uh, well, you don't know what it's like, brother, to live in the city and things. Oh, I've been in the city. I never lived in the city, thankfully, but I've, I've been overnight in the city and things. Um, I understand. Uh, maybe not on the full scale of being raised in the city or something, but I understand what it's like to be in a very wicked place and defiled. I understand what it's like to feel all alone when your whole family is turning against you. I understand the helplessness of feeling like that and just thinking, there's no hope for me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I can stay clean from this. Whole family comes over and they're talking about wicked things that I'm supposed to be there for the family and don't you know leave. You'll make your cousin feel bad or your grandmother or something and you're and you're just. Oh, but I feel very vexed. I need to get away from this. God will get you out of that situation. He did it for me. He can do it for you. So, um, I would recommend writing down these scriptures. Put them in your Bible. Here's the list. Matthew, <clears throat> well, I'll just go like that. You can read them for yourself. Getting to see my notes. There you go. You can pause that, write those down. It's okay. I'll let you have copyright permission to, to actually see my uh, notes there. <laughs> But uh, <clears throat> Lord put that study in my mind because, you know, just going out and things. And I forget what it was the other, just the other day, they went to some store and they had uh, music. Oh, that's right. There was a, a thrift uh, store in Presque Isle, Cubby Thrift Store, Pres Presque Isle, sort of a Salvation Army Goodwill type of thing. And went in there and, you know, I understand that people will have music playing that's vexing. But, I mean, they had it just cranked. It was so loud and just overpowering. And I thought... 
Okay, time to go. Um, I mean, I was in there trying to find some clothing for Oliver and maybe a shirt for myself or something. And <clears throat> it was so loud and so obnoxious. I just finally said to my wife and my son, I said, okay, we need to go. Let's go. Let's get out of here. And they were, yeah, let's get out of here. We all just were so vexed. We got out there into the vehicle and we were saying, oh, man. Oh, I almost have a headache from being in that place. What did we do? Started talking about the things of the Lord. Uh, I think I started singing a hymn. You know, get clean, brethren. Seek to live a clean life. And if you say, well, I'm a Christian, but I still uh, I still enjoy some of the dirty things and whatever else. I'm not quite as judgmental or whatever, so uh, legalistic <laughs> uh, as you. Okay, well, uh, that's a problem if you don't mind the dirtiness and filthiness of this world. Um, righteous people are vexed by the filthy conversation of the wicked. We don't uh, look at it and say, oh, I, I don't really mind. Check yourself if that's the way you feel. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your prayers and your support. See you in the next video.